In this lecture, we want to introduce p-adic integers. So first recall that using Hensel lemma, we were able to construct the seven adic expansion of square root of two. And uh, we found that this expansion was the sequence of integers like this three, 10, one, zero, eight, and so on. So this was discussed in a previous lecture. So in the general case, the process is like this. You have x1, you write it as a0 plus a1p. And instead of a0, you write x0 and this a1p we keep as such. Then x2 was a0 plus a1p plus a2p square. But this thing is exactly the same like this. So instead of this, you write x1. So you have x1 plus a2p square. And inductively, you can keep on going on and xn would be a0 plus a1p and all the way here, which will be ending at a n minus one, p n minus one plus this. So till this n minus one term, you can write as x n minus one plus a n p n. So immediately you can notice is that x one is actually equivalent to x zero modulo p. And then x two is equivalent to x one modulo p square. And x3 would be equivalent to x2 modulo p cube. And xn would be equivalent to xn minus 1 modulo p to the n. So, and this is precisely what the definition of these p adic integers are. So, it is a sequence of integers. So, this sequence of integers x0, x1, x2, so on. This gives a p adic integer if xn is equivalent to xn minus 1 modulo p to the n. So precisely what we have written here. So x1 is equivalent to x0 modulo p, x2 is equivalent to x1 modulo p square. So xn is equivalent to xn minus 1 modulo p to the n. And this xn, this lies in z modulo pn plus 1 z, and this n is greater or equal to 0. So precisely the way we constructed the 7 at x expansion of root 2 and that is what the definition of p-adic integer becomes. So now say you have two different sequences you have x is a p-adic integer y is a p-adic integer that means they have these sequences associated with them which satisfy this rule and then x and lies in here. Then you have addition and multiplication defined on these sequences so you can add and multiply as easy as you can think it is essentially term by term so you can add them term by term so x plus y would be the first term would be x0 plus y0 second term would be x1 plus y1 and you can multiply coordinate wise so x times y so first term would be x0 times y0 and then x1 times y1 and so on and nth uh, or n plus one -th term would be xn dot yn because we are starting from zero. So this is our notation for uh, p adic integer. So it is inverse limit of rings. So you take this inverse limit z over p and z precisely because this xn lies in z modulo p n plus one z. So this is the inverse limit. And you can see integers inject into p adic integers. Uh, in a standard way so you take an integer you do x modulo p x modulo p square x modulo p cube and so on so you can do an injection here so now an uh, important remark so first thing you have to notice is that p-adic integers have a unique sequence and that is precisely because once you fix x zero then you follow this Hensel lemma step by step to find x1 x2 x3 and so on so you have a fixed algorithm to find the next step inductively. So you find these next steps inductively. So we have an algorithm which starts from x0 and you construct the rest of the sequence using our Hensel lemma. And we have been able to do this for the expansion of root two using uh, the seven adic expansion. You fix the first term and then rest of them follow. So p adic integers have a unique uh, sequence. So now we come to an important proposition. So this proposition says, say x is a p-adic integer. So this integer is invertible if and only if its first term, this first term is not equivalent to zero modulo p. So this direction is easy to show. So say this x is a p-adic integer and it is invertible. 
So invertible means that there is another sequence y like this. So x times y is equal to 1. So x times y equals to 1 means that you have term by term multiplication. So this is our n plus 1 th term because we are starting from 0. Similarly, this is uh, the n plus 1 th term, not the nth term because you are starting from 0. So you, we are going like this. So you have xn times yn is equal to 1 modulo pn plus 1 because you uh, this is n plus uh, n plus 1 th term. So, uh, so you will have this uh, pn plus 1 here. So this is equivalent to 1 modulo pn plus 1 and this is true for all n. In particular for 0, x0 is not equal to 0 modulo p. So this part was easy. So now in the opposite direction, we are given now x0 is not 0 modulo p. So from here, we have this construction which will give us xn is also not equal to 0 modulo p which you can see you do modulo p here all these terms will go to 0. So xn is equivalent to a0 modulo p but a0 we are setting it as x0 so this is equal to x0. So we are working in this here z modulo pn plus 1z where p is a prime number. So therefore if xn is not 0 here then there is some inverse yn so that this is equivalent to 1 modulo pn plus 1. In fact this will hold for all n because even for x2 if you do modulo p these terms will go away it will just be x0 so x2 is equivalent to x0 modulo p. So for all these terms you can find a corresponding yn so that this is equivalent to 1. So you have something like this xn minus 1 times yn minus 1 is equivalent to 1 this and you can do this modulo pn. So now to show that starting from here x0 not 0 to show that this x uh, is a periodic integer which is invertible we have to construct the sequence yn because you have to find an inverse and uh, so we have to say yn is a periodic integer since yn is equivalent to 1 is equivalent to yn minus 1 modulo pn so this we have to show. So if we show this, because this thing has to hold for our sequence to be constructed so that you can say that yn is a periodic integer, it is an inverse if you start with some sequence with the initial term not equal to 0. So this will follow from the fact that so this x0 is not equal to 0 modulo p and you are given that this is a, so first term is non-zero, so th it is a sequence of uh, it's a sequence of integers like this first term is not zero if the first term is not zero you are saying that you get a invertible element of periodic integers so first term is not zero but this is a periodic uh, integer so there is a sequence like this it's in particular it satisfies something like this so this we will copy right here and now we already know this is true so now you can um, you can do the cancellation because these two are equivalent modulo pn so you can do this cancellation which will give you yn minus 1 is equivalent to yn modulo pn and uh, yeah therefore you have a sequence like this so therefore we have a unique maximal ideal you know so this unique maximal ideal is precisely those elements which are not invertible and the elements which are not invertible are precisely those who have the first element equivalent to 0 because we have just shown that if it is not uh, 0 then it is invertible. So this forms the maximal element of our periodic integers. So you have the sequence of integers if the first element is 0 you get a maximal ideal. So we have a morphism which goes from this periodic integers to z modulo pz. Uh, go from here to first term x0. So we can go from morphism to isomorphism by modulo outing with this maximal ideal m here. So from periodic integers you modulo out the maximal ideal. So we will get a isomorphism. If you just consider this then you have a surjective homomorphism. So this is a surjective homomorphism corresponding to this map. 
and the kernel of this homomorphism is precisely this maximal ideal m and that's how once you model out with kernel uh, you get the uh, isomorphism so this isomorphism is your p-adic integers modulo out the maximal ideal and then this becomes isomorphic to z modulo pz so you know that z modulo pz is a field so from here you can also see that m is a maximal ideal 